Good morning. It has been a good while since I posted a video. Um, been working on getting some more installs lined up for you guys. Um, so you can follow along. Um, it's a little after 5 a.m. on Saturday morning. And I am headed to Vegas. Um, for a couple of reasons. First, got more work to do down at the church down there. I'm going to also try and get another church uh, in Vegas, kind of a sister church, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but NAB is next week, uh, so it's my pleasure uh, to be able to go to, to that trade show. And I have somewhere around probably 130 vendors that I want to go see. Uh, got it all organized and went through every single vendor. Um, A through Z, and gonna gonna do something a little different. Um, I'm not gonna take video of every single one, and I'm definitely not going to uh, necessarily um, take video of the big guys. You know, Sony, Canon, Panasonic, that kind of thing. Uh, my goal is to try and find unique products. Um, that either are going to be useful for uh, for you guys out there, or something that I just haven't seen before, and I want to I want to see if I can get my hands on it, um, or at the very least have them tell me about it. So, uh, with that, starts uh, what I'm estimating to be about a 17-hour drive um, for me, and uh, come on along. So, most of the time, I think people who get up this early in the morning are crazy, but it's not without its perks. I know you can't see that. Now you can. That is Mount Hood, our beloved mountaineer in the Portland area. guys my goodness God is pulling out all the stops on this sunrise gorgeous so we are climbing up into the mountain or over the mountain I should say and you guys are in for a treat because as soon as we come around this next corner uh, Mount Hood should be filling our view and still uh, covered pretty heavily in snow. Oh mama, it is windy. Look at that. Woo. That is just pretty. I mean with the sun behind it, oh wow. Maybe people getting up this early got something. They got something figured out. Those are the three sisters over there. There's actually three separate mountains. Um, this is the Crooked River National Grassland. So. Doing all right. Still awake. A little tired because I think I may have gotten about an hour, hour and a half of sleep last night. Um, you know, as I hinted, I never get up this early, or very, very rarely. So my sleep schedule is actually quite a bit shifted. Um, Well, it's quite a bit different, let's put it that way, so I usually stay up late and, uh, and I sleep late because of that, so staying up late and then, you know, I was tired, I just couldn't fall asleep last night, so 
Anyway, see how far I can get without uh, chemical assistance. It's just about 9.30 uh, in the morning, and I am about 20 miles outside of Burns. That's my first uh, fuel stop, and I am battling some just nasty wind. And, like, it's so bad that the markers on the side of the road are, like, bouncing in the wind. About half an hour to 45 minutes ahead of schedule, so that's good. Unfortunately, um, Roxy has uh, thrown up a light. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with that symbol, that is the tire pressure monitoring system. And that does not bode well. Um, so about every 20 miles or so, I'm getting out and I'm checking it. And if it is indeed a leak. It's a very, very slow leak. Um, but I've had it happen before where... Um, ah, I was going to pass somebody, sorry. Uh, because it relies on an acoustical signature, when that changes, it throws this light up. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a leak in a tire. Um, it just means that the acoustical signature has changed and it doesn't recognize it. So uh, when I tank up, you know, I'm going to wash the windows, that kind of thing. And then I'm going to pull out and I'm going to read the manual and see how I can reset that. Um, and that will help me troubleshoot because if it comes on again, then it's probably a leak. And I'm going to have to do something about that. So let's hope it's not a leak. Well, I just tanked up and I'm now on my way to Battle Mountain, Nevada. That's the next leg. Uh, my GPS is telling me what to do again. And I went ahead and I got a uh, tire pressure gauge. I couldn't remember if I had one, but um, I figured you, you can never have too many, right? So I went ahead and I got one. Checked the tire pressure on all my tires, and they're all the same. They're all consistent. So, it kind of seems to me that maybe the system is malfunctioning because it's not letting me reset it. Um, and, you know, I can, I can now check tire pressure, but it seems very unlikely to me that all four tires would have the same, um, the same rate. Well, number one, that all four tires would be leaking and that they'd be leaking at the exact same rate because tire pressure was exactly the same. So, I don't know. I'll keep an eye on it, but I'm not too concerned about it. Okay, 11, uh, a little after 11.30, and I'm still in Oregon, climbing up uh, through the hills uh, before I drop down into Nevada, and it just occurred to me, I've been on the road now for well over six hours, and on this particular road, I mean, I've run into, into other people, but there's like nobody out here. It's kind of crazy. Um, like, <laughs> on this road, I've been on this road for now 80 miles, and I've seen three cars and they're all coming the other direction hey, this is like really new it's kind of crazy um, let me just flip the camera around here and show you uh, what the view is like so I'm gonna be dropping down into uh, a very rather large valley here um, extends all the way out there and once we get into Nevada, that's where we get into the long, flat, boring drive. Um, 
essentially the road sticks to one side of the of the valley <clears throat> and you're on that road for like a hundred miles it's pretty crazy so that's uh just wanted to share that with you because um it, like i said it just hit me and i thought that i don't know have you guys ever experienced anything like that um i don't know how many of you travel long distances um but yeah let me know so i just passed a semi i've been waiting behind him for a while and what what do i get greeted with tons and i'm not sure if you can see though yeah probably not but my my windshield is just blanketed with little bugs you can kind of see it down there a little bit but yeah the entire windshield <laughs> I mean, I was gonna wash it and clean it when I got uh, when I got gas anyway, but I guess uh, I just is going to encourage me to make sure that I do that. So I'm not really sure why I bothered cleaning the windshield. It just keeps getting dirtier and dirtier as I hit more and more bugs. So I stopped, got some lunch. Um, Sorry, it is way too bright out here. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it, it sounds like rain is hitting the car. But that, but it's not water, it's, it's bugs. That is insane. I've never driven through just swarms of bugs like this. That's crazy. Um, <clears throat> so I've left Winnemucca behind me, and I'm on my way now to... Um, Battle Mountain, and I'm kind of heading east by uh, by southeast, and then once I uh, I hit Battle Mountain, then it's pretty much a straight shot down um, down whatever highway that is. I think it's 305 um, into Vegas, and I'll probably need to fill up gas in uh, Tonopah. Uh, GPS is putting me there at like in Vegas at 8:30. I did the math. Uh, given the the speed I'm going, which is only five over, so don't don't worry. Um, and I'm I'm getting like half an hour to 45 minutes before that, so we'll see. But we're getting there. Uh, I'm scheduled to be there, according to the G GPS, 8:30. Um, I'm going to be estimating probably eight, and uh, it's about 2:30 right now. So it's nice to be on the downhill side of this, for sure. Okay, so that was about 13 minutes. And you remember earlier I said once we get in, drop into Nevada, it's pretty much just staying on one side of these valleys and then at some point going across them. So that's what I just did. And that took a little under 13 minutes. <clears throat> um, now I'm not out of this valley yet. You know, if I turn the camera around here, I mean, it keeps going quite a bit down there. Oh yeah, now it focuses on the windshield. And I'm on this road for another 65 miles before I uh, take my turn. So I wanted you to experience just a little of what it's like driving in these, in these valleys. Um, I mean, they're not the, the largest valleys in the world, certainly, but when you're driving it and it's just one valley after another, <laughs> they get pretty big pretty quickly. Desert in the springtime. Just tons and tons of blooming purple flowers. 
So I stopped here at a rest area because I needed to. And I'm going to show you what these purple flowers look like uh, close up. That's just awesome. So cool. And I mean, it extends like a quarter mile out into the into the field there. It's just amazing. Oh, check this out, guys. Let's see if I can find them. Look at that. Got some groundhogs. Did you hear them? How cool is that? All right, so I've got another 100 mile uh, drive here before my next turn. But this is the valley that I've been looking for, um, that I've been waiting for, because it is immense. Check this out. Look at this thing. So this road, get my sunglasses off so I can see. I follow this road all the way around that set of mountains right there in the distance. Like you can barely even see them down there, okay? And then the road curves and it goes across the valley, okay? And keeps going all the way down until we get to a place called Tonopah. And that's where I'm going to do my last gas stop. And uh, from there, I don't exactly remember what comes next, but we're definitely on the downhill side of this. So, 8.40 ETA in Vegas. So it's about four and a half hours. So, I'm getting excited. It was a long drive. But hey, I mean, I could be driving across, you know, like Iowa or something with no mountains. I mean, look at this. Now that my windshield's clean, you can actually see out of it. Isn't that just gorgeous? Mountains, mountains, mountains. As far as the eye can see. good stuff all right so uh, unless something amazing happens that'll probably this will be be it from me until I get to Vegas um, hopefully gonna be hanging out with uh, with some friends who are also in Vegas uh, this weekend uh, when I get there but we shall see so catch you later failed to book a room for tonight, so I have spent the last four and a half hours scrambling, trying to find some place to lay my very weary head, and I found a place. Doesn't matter where, I'm going to bed. We'll see you tomorrow. They're recording audio. No wiggle at all. How much is this? $2,500? Something like that. There you go. I have my book. I'm trying to.